Sometimes it can be a problem when a host arrives. They get locked outside in the cold Canadian winter because we have it set up in such a way. Our studio is within a massive building. And there's a foyer between us and the outside world, and the foyer gets locked at night. And in order to get into the building, I have to first exit Studio D, walk out the foyer, and unlock the front door to let somebody in. So when Sasha arrives, when Jeff arrives, when Henry Bailey Brown arrives, they usually message me on Discord. They let me know that, I'm, that they're here. Sometimes I don't catch that right away. <laughs> And it's 40 below and it's like freezing rain out or whatever it may be. So that's my scenario. Your scenario may be a little bit different. Maybe you just want to be able to walk into your house and have all of your devices recognize that, hey, honey, I'm home. Maybe you want to use this in an office where if I walked in the door, all of a sudden my time is being tracked. Maybe that's a cheap, maybe a free way for you to be able to track your employees coming and going from the office maybe well how can we do that well everybody carries a device i've got my smartphone my smartphone is connected to the wi-fi as soon as i approach the studio once i'm here it connects to wi-fi and what does that tell you well i have an ip address on the lan now that I'm connected to the Wi-Fi. And if I have an IP address on the LAN, what can I presumably have happen to me? I can be pinged. Can I be pinged? Well, here's the thing. We don't often do this with a, a, a smartphone, for example. We just let the DHCP server just dish out IP addresses and it's all fine and good. But Robbie's here. We know and trust Robbie. Robbie's a staff member. And when Robbie's here, we want to know about it. Sasha, when she arrives, maybe we want to know. Maybe in my case, I want to have a little light come on that says, hey, Robbie, it's time to open the door. Walk out through the foyer and unlock the door. Let her in. Maybe in your office, you want to be able to track if your, if your staff is there on time and spending the entire shift and monitoring those. Maybe it's like a who knows Maybe it's an environment where you just get paid while you're there. Or maybe you just, hey, want to have that light come on when the staff has arrived. So how can we do that? Well, every device has a MAC address. The MAC address is a private address that's not available on the web. But it's available on the device and it's available to the DHCP, DHCP server. So your DHCP server that dishes out the IP address to every connected device says, all right, we're going to give this the next address in the DHCP pool. 10.0.0.107 could be your phone. So... Get into your DHCP server, whether it's a router or a Windows DHCP server, or maybe you've got a Linux DHCP server, and look at the MAC address of that device and set up a DHCP reservation. So now, every single time I connect to the Wi-Fi, my smartphone is given the same IP address. Whatever I've defined, pardon me, in my case, I've said dot five zero ping ten dot zero dot zero dot five zero what do you see hey that's robbie's phone so what happens if i pick up my phone and i'm gonna count down from three i'm gonna disconnect from the wi-fi you ready for this three two one click i am now off the wi-fi what has happened to your screen it's frozen robbie's now left the building or he's turned off his Wi-Fi, but why would he do that if this is being used to track his hours and make sure that he's paid? There you go. Destination host unreachable. I'm going to reestablish my Wi-Fi connection just by pushing the Wi-Fi button on my phone in three, two, one, now. And let's see how long it takes. So I've now approached the building, and guess what? Robbie's back, right? So we know that that's the case well how can we use that information for good well easy peasy i always make things easy for you head on over to my github github.com slash 
Cat5 TV slash Linux tools. Linux dash tools, I should say. And there's a script there called Wi-Fi Check. Let's do it. Click on it. Click on RAW. And let's download it. Save as. And I'm going to throw that on my desktop. It's calling it a .txt. Whatever. I'll rename it. And now let's jump into my terminal. Go to my desktop. Move Wi-Fi check.txt to Wi-Fi check dot dot. All right. Ch mod plus x Wi-Fi ch, uh, dash check. So now that file is executable. All right. So now I need to create a config file. So I'm going to call that Wi-Fi dash check dot CFG. So echo. And we're going to go 10.0.0.50 was my established IP address, right? So I'm going to save that to Wi-Fi-check.cfg. So now if I nano that file, look at this. Oh, no, not Wi-Fi check. .cfg, .cfg. There it is, 10.0.0.50. So if Sasha brings in her smartphone, I'm going to assign a, a static IP address to her, which is going to be 10.0.0.51. Okay, so let's pretend. So I've added that to the .cfg file. So now if I run that file, Wi-Fi-check, what do you see? 10.0.0.50 equals 1. 10.0.0.51 equals 0. Well, what does that tell us? Okay, so we've established Robbie's .50, Sasha's .51. Do you see Sasha? Sasha's not here. Robbie is. So Robbie equals 1. Sasha equals 0. One point for Robbie. So now, programmatically, we can say, okay, well, we can, we can program that, we can change that, we can manipulate that to say, okay, is Robbie online? And we can run that as a cron job, right? Okay, so similarly, let's take my smartphone and I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi. So now my Wi-Fi is off. I'm going to run that command again and watch what happens. You can assume what happens, but 10.0.0.50, which we've already established is Robbie is going to time out and it's going to say zero. So now we know that both Robbie and Sasha are gone from the building. I've turned on my Wi-Fi and I'm going to run that command again. And now we can see Robbie's back. Sasha's still not here. So what does that do for me? So now programmatically I can say, let's get an alert. Let's use a GPIO on a Raspberry Pi to be able to trigger events. So as soon as Sasha approaches the building and her phone connects to my Wi-Fi, now all of a sudden a green light above the door turns on and I know exactly what that is. I'm going to head over there and open the door. No more standing out in the Canadian cold winters. And we can do, we can program that to be able to log things to a MySQL database. There's no limit. As long as you've got some creativity and a little know-how, you're going to be able to do this. So let's look at that source code and see what it's actually doing. So I'm going to edit Wi-Fi-check from my Git repository. So what it's done is it's opened the file, the, the config file that I created, and it's grabbing the addresses. Well, they don't have to be, I should say, they don't have to be um, IP addresses on a local LAN. I can put google.ca if I wanted to, and then if I run it, just, just so you know, so just so you know the flexibility of this. So you can see google.ca is online. It's responding to a ping. So I just want you to know that it has that flexibility, okay? So you can put anything in there that you want, as long as it's a valid host name, a domain name, or um, it could be an IP address, as we're using in the demonstration today, for this particular use case. So then it pings it. Well, that's all it does. It just pings it. There it is. Ping. And it pings the host. And if it is up, it responds with one. And if it's down, it responds with zero. Okay, well, what good is that if it responds with one or zero? You know, what, what do I do with that information, Robbie? Well, this is why I wanted to show you the source code. Because you can now say, okay, well, I know that it's echoing out 10.0.0.0. 5, 0 equals 1, why don't we instead, wait a minute, why don't I delete that line and say echo, and we're going to say dollar sign $host dot, and remember this is PHP, uh, is up dot PHP EOL. 
All right. And maybe I take this one and I say, uh, well, you know what? Maybe there's no else. Maybe I can remove the else and say, it's only going to tell me if it's up. So now if I run that, 10.0.0.50 is up, right? But it doesn't show me the ones that are down. Or maybe I can take that and I'm only showing you that there's no limit, okay? Maybe I can say, let's just use a really simple command. If dollar sign host equals equals 10.0.0.50, we're going to say... Da, da, da. Echo. Robbie's here. Oh, we need a... Boom. Okay. See what I'm doing? And then I'm going to change this to an else. So if it's not Robbie, 10.0.0.50, it's going to just echo the host name. So now I'm going to re-add Google to that. So you can see, because Google's going to be up. Watch here. Robbie's here. Yes, my phone is online. Google is up. I got some syntax issues, but that's okay. We can work with that. I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi and then run it again. Notice Robbie's not here. However, Google is up. And then I watch. Google is up. And then I'm going to get that syntax issue again. I'll fix that. Don't you worry. I know exactly what's happening there. See that? Google is up. My config file, I accidentally added an, a couple extra carriage returns. That's why it's, it's running against a carriage return. It's trying to ping nothing. So dot slash Wi-Fi check. And it's going to say nothing but Google.ca is up. Now I'm going to turn on my Wi-Fi and run the exact same command again. Robbie is here. Google.ca is up. So do you see what I'm doing there? So programmatically, I can do anything, absolutely anything, and treat people's connectivity to their smartphone. So their smartphone connects to the Wi-Fi. The DHCP server dishes out the IP addresses based on their reservation, based on their MAC address. Now you can control events based on coming and going of your staff. I don't think I need to say anything more. I think already in your head, ideas are coming. I want you to comment below. I want you to tell me, what kind of ideas does that birth? What kind of things can you do with this? I think of time tracking as a great example. Robbie checked in. Robbie signed out. Here's his paycheck based upon that information. It's really hard to spoof that, right? And I mean, if you trust your staff anyways, it's really not a trust thing. It's, a, it's simply an ease of use thing. As soon as you connect to Wi-Fi, guess what? I'm tracking the fact that you are connected. There's no, there's no tracking. There's no privacy issue here. It's just simply, are you online or are you not online? It's a ping. And as long as that device or that domain or that IP address replies to ping ICMP, then uh, you're going to be able to... In, incorporate that into your config file. Cat5 TV on GitHub. You'll find a repository called Linux-Tools, which will get you started.